right now on 5 on Your Side at 10. Opening day in St. Louis from old favorites to new faces. Thousands of fans in red brave the cold for the return of baseball in St. Louis. It is cold, but it's also like, it's just fun to be down here. A Redbird winner warmed their hearts. Chilly for the home opener and cold tonight. A freeze warning goes in effect in two hours for areas west of St. Louis. Our top story, claims of racism on the campus of Wash U. The incident that led to the suspension of a fraternity and sorority. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. Mike Bush has the night off tonight. Black students at Washington University are calling on their school to take more action. As Five in Your Side's Brent Solomon explains, this comes after a disturbance in a dining hall that students say included racial slurs against workers. They start going on tables and dancing and like jumping and screaming. This student asked not to be identified due to what students call hateful language being used towards those who are speaking out. This student was in the Bears Den, a WashU dining hall also known as BD. The volume is kind of getting louder and we and we hear like stumbling and people coming in from both doors and, we're, and I'm like, oh hell no. They're like, clear the area, clear the area. They're screaming, um, kind of like belligerent. It was last month. The student walked out only to return to see things had escalated. Eggs splattered all over the floor. They're spit on the door that we opened. The student believes it was pledges for Greek organizations. The student tells me one of the workers indicated a pledgee made a racial slur. We're talking black workers. Yes, black workers, like black workers. There's a level of hesitancy to speak about it because they're in a vulnerable state of they have jobs to maintain. In a statement, Wash U said we would take any allegations of disruptive or harassing behavior very seriously. We're committed to creating a campus environment where all feel welcome and respected and where every member of our community is treated fairly with due process. This is a very real result that we're seeing right now of why DEI is so important in educating our scholars and the staff and having policies put in place that promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's demoralizing to have to serve someone and serve a population that you know will make your life harder, make your job harder. That's not in their job description to clean up eggs and spit. The Association of Black Students at Wash U says there have been repeated incidents of anti-black racial violence that have, quote, gone largely unaddressed on our campus. Tomorrow, students are organizing a rally in support of those dining workers. Tonight, St. Louis police are investigating what caused an SUV to crash into a North City building. This happened at the corner of MLK Drive and Marcus. No word of any injuries. The building sustained major damage. A chilly night across the St. Louis region tonight. In fact, some of our western counties will be under a freeze warning overnight. But a weekend warm-up is in store. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with the weather first forecast. You know, it was a chilly day for our opening day in St. Louis for baseball. And tonight it's cold, but the clouds are starting to break up. And depending on where you are, if you have the clearer sky, your temperatures are dropping off. Right now, the clouds are still hanging along the Mississippi River and over St. Louis. But off to our east and back to our west, we have some clearing. That's reflected in the temperatures you see from Greenville, Illinois to Effingham to Mount Vernon in the upper 30s. Rolla is in the upper 30s. Most of the rest of us are still in the 40s. Overnight, our coldest temperatures will likely be to the west of St. Louis because the winds will settle there more so than farther east. We expect temperatures to be in the upper 20s to around 32 degrees. So 29, 30, 32. Those temperatures here from Bowling Green down to Troy, back out to Warrington, Washington, St. Clair, down towards Steelville, Potosi, Rolla, Gasconade County too. Y'all are going to be looking at the potential for a little frost, a little freeze early tomorrow morning. But again, if you have something that's outside that you want to protect, it has to be something that needs protection, right? Your tulips, they're fine. The daffodils are fine. Anything that's naturally blooming at this point for the most part is pretty much okay. But if you planted something that's more of a summer type plant, you might want to throw a little cloth on it tonight or cover it with a little paper and then take that off tomorrow morning. Won't last long. Warm ups on the way for the weekend, Kelly. Talking about that 
in 12 minutes. All right, Scott, and as you mentioned, Bush Stadium, it was cold there today. Well, it's empty tonight. Just a few hours ago, the stands were covered in a sea of red for the Cardinals home opener. It is a day fans have been waiting months for. And it would not be opening day without the majestic Budweiser Clydesdale's annual trot around the diamond. There was even more rich tradition with the parade of Cardinals Hall of Famers and their red jackets and the players who currently wear the birds on the bat. Country music artist and St. Louis native Michael Whitfield then wowed the crowd with the national anthem. We have team coverage tonight. Laura Barcheski caught up with some of the thousands of fans who packed Bush Stadium and Ballpark Village today. First, though, Sports Director Frank Cusimano leads things off with more on the team's come from behind win, Frank. Well, Kelly, they are far from perfect, and they have more questions than a five-year-old and more injuries than at a 16-over pickleball tournament. However, the Cardinals are winning games. Make it four out of six on another special opening day. So with all the injuries, Michael Ciani, who wasn't supposed to even make the team, started and came up with an incredible catch right off the bat early in the game. And with Wilson Contreras injured, Yvonne Herrera got the call at catcher and batted fourth, and he delivered like a cleanup hitter with a solo shot of the second, two hits and two RBIs. The Cardinals won the game on the seventh with five runs. The big blow was this double by Nolan Gorman, which played at two. The Cardinals beat the Marlins eight to five. If I can narrow it down to one thing, this club's going to fight. Um, I think we've shown that in a short period of time, but if there's one thing we're going to do is we're going to fight. It uh, doesn't matter if we're down. There's not a whole lot of panic in that group. The Cardinals have played a game on eight straight days in three different cities. Tomorrow, they get to rest. The series with the Marlins resumes on Saturday at Bush. Kelly? All right. Thank you, Frank. We'll see you a little later. Tens of thousands of fans bundled up and packed the stands at Bush, but you didn't need a ticket to be part of the opening day excitement. Laura Barcheski is live tonight with the Pulse of Cardinal Nation. Well, Kelly, what a successful opening day. The cold didn't keep any of the fans away, and it certainly didn't keep the Cardinals from getting the win today. Cardinals baseball is finally back in the loo for the 19th opening day in Bush Stadium 3. I always love like the fresh smell of the grass and nachos and people getting beer and just being down here and having a good time. It's a St. Louis holiday that doesn't have a spot on your average calendar. I think it is like an unofficial holiday and I live over in Illinois and I just feel like it should be a day off from school and work. For the team and the fans, opening day is all about traditions, new ones. This is my first time at opening day ever. And so I'm with my son and his girlfriend, my boyfriend. So we're really excited about it. And old ones. We just wear kegs and eggs. And it's, it's the, uh, the aura, the atmosphere, the people, the people watching, it's just so much fun. It's also good for businesses like Katie's Pizza and Pasta, bringing the big bucks back downtown. So very big deal because I'm St. Louis born and raised. This is our third location. We built this restaurant for an opening day. <laughs> we didn't open in time last year. So this is our first one and we are stocked up and ready to go. We're so excited. For fans, this season wipes the slate clean after a rough time last year. This is our city. This is our team. This is what, this is what it is. And some of our our favorite Cardinal legends like Pujols, Molina, and Wainwright left a little magic behind to put a win on the board, beating the Miami Marlins 8-5. to five. Go Cardinals! Yeah! Well, the Cardinals will be back here this Saturday and Sunday to finish out this series with the Marlins. And it's looking like that's going to be more like baseball weather, which Scott will tell you about in just a few minutes. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barcheski, 5 on your side. And for all our Cardinals coverage and what you need to know when coming down to Bush this season, just text the word CARDS to 314-425-5355. Tonight, a Jefferson County man is charged in a string of burglaries at St. Louis businesses. New at 10, Robert Townsend talked to one man who says the suspect hit his family-owned shop twice over the weekend. For the past 38 years, 71-year-old Dan Haggerty has run Old World Roofing near Brandon Avenue in Magnolia in South St. Louis. What do you like about this business? Uh, being able to do it the right way, 
and don't cut any corners. I love it. Monday, Haggerty showed up at his shop and did not like what he saw. Climbed on the back fence from the railroad tracks, came in. He says Easter Sunday morning, Gage Lutman came onto his property. The cameras picked him up again the whole time he was wearing a mask. Haggerty told police Lutman climbed over his back fence. He walked around and looked inside, opened the door of every truck, crawled back out the back gate. Hours later, around 2 a.m. The gate was open, the chain, the chain had been cut. The longtime business owner says Lutman returned with another man. Haggerty says Lutman and his accomplice stole hundreds of tools from him. He says they put them on the back of that truck you see right there. 85% of the guys still don't have all of the proper tools that they need to do their daily job. It'll, it'll slow us down for a week. Police arrested Ludman Monday afternoon. Prosecutors charged him in connection with three burglaries over the past four months. Investigators say Ludman was already on probation and the main suspect in 25 other burglaries. I'm very relieved. And despite now having to replace his stolen tools. You got a new chain and new locks. Mr. Haggerty has a message for the suspected burglars. I, I'll put you to work tomorrow morning. You know, but don't steal from me. Robert Townsend, five of your side. And police say during one of the break-ins, Lutman stole hundreds of dollars worth of jewelry, which they recovered from his home. Prosecutors expect to file more charges against him. Tonight, police are looking for this man charged in a triple shooting that killed two teens in Oakville. Trevor Daly is wanted on several charges, including two counts of second degree murder. 15 year old Colin Courtright and his friend Tyree Williams were shot and killed in February. Investigators say the teens planned a robbery while buying marijuana cartridges. Three others are also charged in the shooting, including two Oakville high school seniors. Just hours ago, a vigil was held on the Mizzou campus for Riley Strain. The 22 year old was found dead in Nashville, Tennessee last month, two weeks after he disappeared during a fraternity trip. Police don't suspect foul play. Strain's fraternity brothers at Delta Chi hosted tonight's gathering. A push in the show me state to protect the makers of popular weed killers. No corporation should get away with anything like that. Tonight, a St. Louis company, the target of tens of thousands of lawsuits, is responding. Glyphosate does not cause cancer, nor do the uses of Roundup. Tonight, the I-Team delves into the legislation and its possible impact. Once this pesky upper low moves on, we become brighter and warmer for at least part of the weekend. We're tracking a weekend rain chance, and if the clouds move out in time for Monday's eclipse. Missouri is now one of three states where bills have been filed this year to shield pesticide makers from lawsuits. Tonight, the I-Team is sitting down with a spokesperson for one of the world's biggest manufacturers of weed and grass killers. Senior investigative reporter Paula Fasson digs into the proposed legislation and its implications across the state. There is fierce debate swirling in Missouri and nationwide about the safety of the most popular weed killer on the market, Roundup. Its parent company, Bayer, has shelled out billions to defend its product. Thousands of people nationwide, people like Leon Smith, have sued, claiming the pesticide's active ingredient, glyphosate, caused non-Hodgkin lymphoma. What I went through was heartbreaking. No corporation should get away with anything like that. Tonight, we delve into a contentious issue that has been... Now, a week after the I-Team's first report about newly proposed legislation in Missouri to shield pesticide makers from liability, we sit down with a leader at Bayer. There's unfortunately a lot of misinformation. These products are extremely safe to use. So are you saying there is no increased risk of causing cancer? Glyphosate does not cause cancer, nor do the uses of Roundup. It's a statement at odds with the World Health Organization. In 2015, it classified glyphosate as probably carcinogenic to humans. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has said it's safe when used as directed. Other pesticide regulatory agencies around the world largely agree. But amid continued legal battles, attorneys and health advocates tell the I-Team Bayer is using lobbyists to push for legislation, laws that would protect pesticide makers from liability. You, Christensen tells the I-Team the company and much of the agricultural industry fully supports the legislation because the future of American farming depends on it. If weeds grow, it will decrease how much a farmer can produce. 
So it takes nutrients, water, it takes away from the crop itself. What we want to do is be able to make sure that the that glyphosate remains on the market. Attorneys like Tony Simon don't have a problem with Roundup being sold. He does have a problem with the label. I think they should put a warning on the product that tells people use of this product increases your chance of getting cancer, just like the cigarette companies. And he says he doesn't trust the EPA's assessment. The regulatory body does not conduct its own studies and relies on companies to submit its own data. Bayer also says it works with third-party labs for research, chosen by the company. Many call it a flawed approach, riddled with conflicts of interest. Christensen calls it a stringent and transparent process set by the government. Do you believe that the warnings on Roundup are as transparent as possible? Yes, they absolutely are. And the fact of, of glyphosate not causing cancer is backed by lots of regulatory authorities and hundreds of scientifically peer-reviewed data sets. The I-team emailed and called multiple times to hear from the sponsor of the proposed Missouri bill, Republican lawmaker Justin Brown. His office eventually told us he had no comment. The Missouri Coalition for the Environment tells us the proposed legislation shows how companies like Bayer do not want to pay the cost of harming people. The company continues to stand by the safety of its product and the EPA, a regulatory body with a goal of protecting people's health and the environment. But critics question the agency's reliability. The EPA took 30 years to fully ban asbestos. For the I-Team, Paula Vassan, five on your side. If you have a tip for Paula and the Five on Your Side I team, you can leave a voice message, 314-444-5231, or send an email. It's tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joins us again with the weather first forecast. And um, when are things going to warm up a bit? You know, well, we'll, we'll get pretty behind you. Yeah, look at that. Well, I know you were inside tonight, Kelly. You're not able to get out and enjoy the sunset. When the sun was setting tonight, boy, did we have some color around the St. Louis area. This from the Illinois side of the river. Chris Pritchett sharing this with us from Staunton. He's one of our Five on Your Side weather watchers on the Facebook group. Just join our weather watchers. Look for Five on Your Side weather watchers on Facebook. We'd love to see your picture as well. But boy, a lot of color in there. We're in the process of seeing those clouds clearing. So it's a cold night tonight. A freeze possible for some, especially especially west of St. Louis. And then again, early Saturday may be frosty too, especially east of St. Louis as we head into Illinois. Right now, still looking at the clouds around most of the metro. 46 degrees at Lambert. 51 was the high, 40 was the low. You don't get a lot of range when you deal with a good deal of cloud cover, and that's what we dealt with today. Two points 31, which means a lot of places out to the west and southwest of St. Louis will likely be around 29, 30, 31 degrees. So we have the freeze warning in effect over our western counties metro we should escape that opportunity tonight and then as we shift into tomorrow night the better chance for frost and freezing conditions slides to the east all right so this is the big question everybody's talking about the eclipse we've passed the home opener today at bush stadium next focus is on the eclipse it's monday two o'clock totality southeastern missouri southern portions of illinois a large chunk of our viewing area in that here's the american model here's the european model Trends are for less cloud cover and mainly dry conditions for sure. So we're four days out, two o'clock. We're going to go with partly to mostly sunny skies. We think at this point you're looking about maybe 20 to 40 percent cloud cover, but that's easily taken care of and easily a good view for totality as long as we don't have the thick cloud cover and we don't think that's the case. Part of that's this upper level system that's continuing to spin here around the Great Lakes. Massive system. It's going to trudge to the east, but these upper level lows are pretty pesky. They keep the clouds kind of hanging loose. Tomorrow we'll get rid of the cloud cover and we'll start to get some warmer temperatures in here, but not after we start with that chilly start temperatures in the 30s clouds tomorrow mostly east of the Mississippi River and then we'll see those clouds break up tomorrow evening frosty start perhaps early Saturday but Saturday we're back into the 60s lots of sunshine on the way as we go into Saturday night early on Sunday we will be tracking a weather system that will bring us some showers a few waves of them maybe a rumble or two of thunder this does not look like it has much of a severe weather potential and it looks like it's out of here as we head 
towards Sunday afternoon and will be between weather systems as we go into Monday, which again should set us up for a pretty good view of totality across southeast Missouri, southern Illinois. Partial eclipse in St. Louis. And just a reminder, you have to use those special eclipse glasses, yes. those solar glasses, if you're going to be looking at the sun, if you're anywhere outside of totality. Only in totality can you take your glasses off and look at the sun. And you were going to be in Cape Girardeau? Cape Girardeau. You yeah. and Ann. Exciting, yes. All right. Frank is next with sports. A home opener to remember. The Blues clinging to their playoff hopes in Nashville and the future SLU coach trying to win the NIT championship. We'll be right back. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. Because of injuries, the Cardinals were down to one healthy player on the bench today, but it's opening day in St. Louis. No excuses allowed. 47,000 people showed up to see you beat the winless Marlins, and that's exactly what they did. The Cardinal Hall of Famers in their red jackets took a bow, and the crowd erupted only in St. Louis. Wilson Contreras was unavailable today. His replacement, Ivan Herrera says, we are just fine. A solo shot in the second. He had two hits and two RBIs. Props to the pride of CBC, Jake Berger. His first ever game at Bush Stadium. Two homers and the Marlins were up four to one in the fifth inning. But the Cardinals exploded in the seventh for five runs. This is a big double by Nolan Gorman that scored two. Ryan Helsley finished it off. The Cardinals moved to four and four with an eight to five victory. Yeah, I mean, it took me about three years. <laughs> but man, I've been feeling really good, you know. Been putting a lot of work behind, you know. It, it felt awesome running the bases, looking at the fans. I just, that's a dream come true for me. And just hope I can do, keep doing this, helping the team win. My heart started racing at that time, you know, I started thinking about my family and missing them. Hope they're okay, okay back home and, you know, that home was for my mom. I mean, we played a really good team to start the year. Uh, it's hard to to judge yourself on, on where you're at when it comes to that. Um, so just kind of trusting in, in what you did all off season, um, going back to the basics and just, you know, look for good pitches to hit. You know, looked at the dugout, everybody was going crazy. Looked at the fans going crazy, man. It was it was a lot of fun. Like, I, I was cold at the beginning of the game. At that point, I mean, I was so fired up, man. I couldn't even, couldn't even feel the weather. So the Blues put themselves in this precarious position by losing to hapless San Jose five days ago. But nonetheless, they basically have to be more perfect than a brand new Bentley from here on out. They began the night in Nashville five points back of the Kings with seven games to play. Midway first, Robert Thomas to Brandon Saad. That's his 26th goal. We have a 1-1 game. Some Blues fans were having some fun, but not here. After the Tory Krug turnover, Michael McCarron makes them pay 4-1 Preds. Jordan Cairo actually made it a one-goal game late. Not enough. Preds win 6-3. The Blues will have to make a decision about a coach this offseason. The Billikens already have. Josh Schertz is their choice. And tonight, Schertz was coaching his last game for Indiana State in the NIT championship against Seton Hall. Love you guys. I do. I genuinely love you. I know you love each other. Let's go make history. Let's go. The Sycamores finished the first half on an 11 to nothing run. Look at this length of the court pass to Julian Larrily, and we are tied 39 at halftime. The Sycamores went up seven on this Isaiah Swope three pointer, but Seton Hall, who beat UConn this year, scored the final nine points, and ISU could not convert at the buzzer. The Pirates win the NIT. 79 to 77. The SLU women will play in the WNIT championship on Saturday at 2 o'clock at SIU Edwardsville against Minnesota. SLU has had a remarkable sprint to the finish, winning nine straight games. Mizzou football is cleaning up. Today they got a verbal commitment from a highly regarded four-star quarterback out of Pennsylvania. His name is Matt Zollers, and apparently it came down to Mizzou and Georgia. We'll take a break and we're coming right back after this. 
Counting down the days, the great American eclipse just four days away. And with all eyes on the sky Monday, that could lead to a hazard on the roads. AAA recommends drivers pull over to a safe area if you want to watch. And don't wear your eclipse glasses or try to take photos while you are driving. It's also recommended to drive with your headlights on Monday afternoon and to be on the lookout for animals who may be confused by the celestial event. Five on your side will have live team coverage along the path of totality. Our live special is Monday from 1 until 2.30, both on air and streaming on 5+. Thanks so much for joining us at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. And be sure to start your day with Today in St. Louis. That starts at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.